All right, Ten. So for this video, I'm just going to be showing you all a um, really good rule that you can use in order to find high value terms with geometric sequences. I'm going to just talk real quick about um, a bit of a recap on how we find um, high value terms with arithmetic sequences just to remind you all how that works so that we understand geometric sequences. Now, with arithmetic sequences, remember, we are adding and subtracting. And the rule that we use, which is what we refer to the nth term rule, finding high value terms, is this rule here. Where in this formula, you can see that A uh, refers to the starting number or starting term. N is the, number, the term number that you're after, whether that's term 100, term 30, or term... 50 or whatever it is, and then D is our common difference. And then we know how to use these values, and I've shown you guys how to use this formula, and I have asked you guys to put it in your notes. So um, I'm going to do I ask you to do the same thing and write this in your notes as well. So feel free to pause the video as you go so that uh, you're able to um, yeah put it in your notes. All right, so when it comes to the nth term rule for geometric sequences, again, um, it does help us to find high value terms. That's what we use. Okay, so when we're looking for high value terms, we use the nth term rule because it's hard to actually go and do that in your calculator, for example, and then you know try and find like the 50th number if the ratio is five. It's hard to keep track of what number you're at if you have to keep pressing this. So what we do instead is we use the nth term rule. Okay, and it's again to find high value terms. For geometric sequences, this is the rule. Okay, and I'll read it out for you. It's basically Tn equals V0, which is the starting term, multiplied by the ratio to the power of the term number you are looking for. Okay, so all you're really inputting in your calculator is this part okay, on your, in your calculator here. So I'll explain what each letter represents. V0 is our starting term or starting number. Okay, so whatever you're starting with, we refer to that as V0. N is the term you're looking for. Again, if that's like term 50, or term 160, whatever it is, it's for high value terms. And then R is the common ratio, which we should know how to find. Remember for this uh, normal common ratio, it's any term divided by the previous term. Okay, that's how we find your normal common ratios. Now, once you've got those three, so these three values, you can then use that formula. Okay, let's see how it works in, exa in an example. So here's my sequence of numbers. Uh, I can see there are four numbers here. Okay, and there's three questions that we need to do for this. Firstly, we need to find the value of V0 and R. So V0, remember, is the starting term. R is the common ratio. Second question is we need to find the nth term rule that will help us find any high value terms. Now, the form of the nth term rule for a geometric sequence, remember, looks like this. It's that one just up there that I went through. Okay, it has to look like that when you're writing out a rule for it because what it's going to do is help you find high value terms. Last question is using our rule, let's, let's find the value of the 30th term, T30. And we need to round our answer to two decimal places. Okay. So with these questions, what I like to, to do is I like to name my terms first. So I might call this, remember, because it's the beginning, it's T0. There's T1, T2, T3. Some of you might be asking, is there a difference between using T0 and V0? There actually technically isn't. Um, it doesn't matter what letter you use. As long as you're aware that... The starting is uh, T0 or V0, whatever notation you use, really. You could use any letter that you like. But in this case, I'll just use T. Um, all right. So for the first question, we need to find the value of V0 and the common ratio. So let's do that. So the value of V0 is the same as whatever the starting term is. And we need to find the common ratio. Okay. So in this case, it's pretty straightforward for the V0. I know that it is 112 because it's the starting term, same as T0. So let's write that down. Now the common ratio, okay, remember that formula that I went through uh, just here? Or you guys should know the common ratio formula. It's any term divided by the previous term. 
right? So let's find a common ratio. I might use, I'll use T2 and T1 for this. So for my common ratio formula, it's going to be any term, which is, uh, well, I won't write that, but it's T2 divided by T1. Is that what I said I'd use? Yes, I think. Right, so T2 divided by T1, which will then be, so the value of T2 is 101.08, 101, oops, 0 0.08 divided by 106.4. Okay, and this is going to give us our common ratio. So the ratio here, use your calculator. 101, oops, sorry. 101.08. If you want to, you can use divide or you can use your fraction button if you get confused. 106.4. That will give us a common ratio of 0 0.95. All right, so my ratio in this question is 0 0.95. Remember, in the previous lesson, we learnt about ratios. When they're greater than 1, they tend to increase. But when they're less than 1 like this, they tend to decrease. Or they will decrease, as you can see. So that means to get the next number, we're just multiplying by 0 0.95. Now, question B is asking us to now create our nth term rule for the sequence above. Now, for our nth term rule, okay, all you're doing... Again, is putting your equation or your, sorry, your starting term or your V0 and your common ratio in the form of that equation. So you're only changing two things in this equation. You're just changing whatever V0 is and you're changing whatever the common ratio was. So if I was to rewrite that formula originally, it looks like this. Tn is equal to V0 times R to the power of N. And again, you're only changing two things. What's V0 and what's R? So if you, to, you were to write it, it would be like this. Tn is equal to V0, which was 112, multiplied by the common ratio, which was 0 0.95 to the power of N. Okay, that's my nth term rule for finding any high value terms, but for this sequence. Now, question C is asking us to use our rule to find the value of the 30th term, T30. And we need to round our answer to two decimal places. Okay, so question C, we're looking for the 30th number, or I should, I should say the 30th term using this sequence. Oh, sorry, that recurrence relation. So, all I have to do now is I'm going to rewrite that formula, but to look for the 30th number. So, this is how I would write it. It would be T... 30 is equal to 112 times 0 0.95 to the power of what term are we looking for? Remember, that's what N represents, the 30th term, T30. So all I have to do is now put this in my calculator. Okay, so on my calculator, let's put it in. 112 times 0 0.95 to the power of 30. And that gives us that value. So T30 is equal to 24.04. Okay, remember it does say to round to two decimals. And you can see that that's 0, 03, so that 9 will affect that 3 and become 4. So that means the 30th term, the value of it is 24.04. And that's how we use our nth term rule for geometric sequences. So remember the rule looks like this for geometric sequences. For arithmetic sequences, it looks slightly different. Like that. Make sure you have these in your band references, please. And yeah, have a great day. Thank you.